What's going on guys? Today we're going to be unboxing and reviewing the new NECA Toys Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimate April O'Neil figure. So if you're new to the channel, before we get started guys, the Pop Complex is the place for all things retro and pop culture, including movies, TV, video games, toy collecting, and much more. So if you would guys, please support the channel by hitting that like button if you enjoy this video. Hit the subscribe button so you're always notified anytime the Pop Complex uploads a new video. Hit that bell to be notified. And before we get started, guys, let's make sure we're not behind on our Sony payments again. And as always, my name is Matt, and this is the Pop Complex. guys and here we are getting ready to unbox the NECA toys Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimate April O'Neil as she appeared in the 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie so as you can see here on the front of the box we have a uh, some artwork it's actually a screenshot from the film where we see a shredder shrouded in in mystery actually looking at a bunch of different multiple um, TV monitors and he's watching the April O'Neil uh, broadcast. Known as the Foot Clan. There is no evidence to link such a name to these intimates. Are you denying that such an organization known as the Foot exists? I'm not denying anything. Again, you're putting words into my mouth. I'm sorry, Sorry. It often seems that somebody ought to. Silence. So it is a lenticular style so if you move this to the left and to the right you can see that the screens change from the picture of april to the static kind of giving that cool effect like it did in the movie all right so we have here at the bottom the classic movie style teenage mutant ninja turtles logo you see april o'neill right here and again there's that lenticular effect even on the screens down here on the left and the right at the bottom. So here on the top, just the movie logo, NECA. And on the side, we have the photography of the actual figure itself. And you can see the Judith Hogue likeness there. On the other side, we have uh, sort of in the style of the, the VHS, K, VHS K case for the, uh, the film, uh, had this style, it reminds me of the um, frames from the movie uh, set against the, the logo here and if we flip it over to the back we see some more photography of the figure itself in different poses now she does come with two different heads one with a closed mouth more serious look and one with a slightly opened mouth as in she's uh, you know delivering her newscast and she does come with the channel 3 microphone and there's April O'Neil and the Turtles bio that you can pause and read there, but I'm pretty sure, uh, well actually no, it is it is specific to April O'Neil. It's not just a general um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, bio there. And then we have the FHE style, uh, VHS style NECA logo here and the original artwork that is shown on the VHS cover of the movie. And here on the bottom, we just have the legal and barcode information. So let's take a look at the inside flap here. As you can see, uh, we do have some more photography of the figure herself. Looks like she's propped up against a uh, news van there. And she's got her over the shoulder purse there, her bag and the channel three microphone. But here she is guys, right here inside the packaging. We have April herself. And if we take a closer look, the figure itself actually looks much better than the photography, in my opinion. It much better, more natural looking uh, likeness of Judith Hogue. And then you can see she does come with the alternate head, slightly more smiling with a slightly open mouth. Uh, you can see she does come with, uh, it, it looks like guys here, Smellios and Josh pizzas. So. It looks like she comes with a stack of maybe some frozen pizzas. And I know there's been some confusion as to actually which scene in the film that these appear in. Uh, if you guys know, let me know in the comments because I'm not familiar with that either. I don't know what scene that actually comes from. Some say it's a reference to when she just says, 
Uh, I have some frozen pizzas for you guys to eat, and maybe that's Neca's interpretation of those frozen pizzas, but uh, strange to add that in, in my opinion, when it's something that we don't see her actually use or interact with in the film. You can see Raphael's sigh. Uh, she does come with that, where she did sneak that into her bag at the beginning of the movie. There's the Channel 3 microphone. She does come with a couple different hands, and there's her bag and the alternate head. So, there is NECA Toys Ultimate April O'Neil from the 1990 movie. So let's not waste any more time, guys. We're gonna get her out of the package and take a closer look. Stay tuned. All right, guys, and now here is the Ultimate April O'Neil out of the packaging. So we'll take a closer look, but the first thing I wanted to mention is that the background insert that was inside the box as well is just a very very dark um, street scene maybe a, a street capture from the movie uh, we have a some garbage here in the background a garbage can uh, and what may be the garbage truck at the end of the movie that ended up crushing shredder I'm not really sure offhand but pretty generic uh, street scene uh, that we have here for the background so I will put that to the side, but here is April. And so we'll take a closer look here at her at her face. And like I said, it, it's a much more decent um, face sculpt in person than I think in the actual figure photography that we've seen and that you see on the outside of the packaging. So very decent likeness of Judith Hope from the movie, uh, as you guys may no, she was very involved with the whole process of the sculpting and release and the promotion of this figure, so um, I'm sure she was very pleased with this particular likeness. There we go, even got in, getting the little cleft in her chin in place there, and we can see the alternate head. We'll take a closer look at that. It's more of a smiling face. Lips are slightly parted there, but... Uh, same hairstyle so basically basically the same same likeness just a little bit more happy of an expression than the head that came on the figure so that's nice to have a little bit different april likeness that you can switch out so i went ahead and put her bag over her shoulder uh, so this bag is a hard plastic but the strap is pretty pliable so it does go over her head and over her shoulder pretty easily so as you can see guys you can you, know, you don't have too much trouble sliding it uh, over or under and getting that on her but that is her bag on the sides there very nice detail on this particular accessory I will have to say uh, but there's the bag and I'll go ahead and leave that off for now so take a closer look at the articulation the head is on a ball joint so you can get within the confines of her hair, uh, you can get as much up and down, left to right, up and down angle in the posability that you wish. Um, her shoulders, she does have a shoulder joint that allows up and down, forward and back, and any combination of those two angles. She does have double jointed elbows here, so she can go straight down or up at a complete, uh, complete bend there way past uh, looks like maybe 45 degrees on that so that's very nice and I think the um, articulation is very well hidden here with her shirt uh, now the, the vest that she is wearing um, it is a separate pliable piece here as you can see it's not sculpted in it's a separate separate piece and you can see the little detail to the cut up the back. I think that uh, Judith Hogue was very involved with uh, actually describing her clothes as well um, that she wore to get the sculptors to get a, an actual more uh, movie accurate and like just very spot on likeness of her, her clothes and, and everything as she remembered it. So, so that vest is a separate piece. You can see she's wearing the little brooch there above her buttons detail on the buttons and her skirt uh, she does have a, uh, a ball joint here at the waist so you can get or at the abs so you can get a little bit of an ab crunch not not a whole lot there's not a whole lot of posability here I guess because of the, the top of the skirt is preventing that but you can definitely get some side to side and just a little bit of full up and down forward and back on the ab crunch now the articulation is the same 
in the same arm, but we have here the wrist articulation. She does have a wrist swivel and rocker, so she can go out and in with the wrist and completely from side to side. You can see the detail here on the other hand of her watch even, a closer shot of that. And she came packaged with these two uh, open palmed hands that you see here, but we do have alternate hands that she did come with. So we have some semi-closed gripping hands here, if I can get these in frame. So that would be good for gripping her microphone that I will show you guys here in a second. And if you see here, the attention to detail, April is wearing a thumb ring here, which I've never noticed that in the film, but it's definitely probably there because they they put it here on the figure. But look at the, if you can get see the detail, how actually shiny that is, that it does look like, like a real gold shine on that thumb ring. I never noticed that in the film before, guys. But two semi-closed gripping hands. And then we have her right hand, we have a completely closed gripped fist. This cannot hold any accessories at all. And you can see the ring there as well on her thumb. And the final hand here is for April's left hand. It's a pointing finger. So I guess if she is delivering her newscast and pointing and putting someone on the spot, Accusing right there live on channel three. There's April's pointing hand as well So now we will take a look while since I've mentioned it her microphone as you can see the WTRL Right there with the channel three logo Very great detail on that all the way around on the microphone and this does come with a bendy wire cord that ends it's probably about Maybe I'd say three or four inches long here that just kind of would disappear into the back behind her or into the background, but it does come with a nice long uh, bendy, bendy wire cord for this microphone. And we will take a look at the rest of April's articulation. So the skirt here is a little bit flexible here at the bottom and uh, it is kind of rubbery plastic as you can see with the cut up the back there very nice attention to detail as you can see on the sides here the sculpted in wrinkles on the front and the sides very nice and as you can see uh, april's thighs here her hips are on a ball joint so within the confines of this skirt she can get as much forward and back as the skirt will allow and outward side to side and any combination of those and there is a little bit of a twist here in the knee but we'll take a look at these knees now I know these these legs were a little bit of a point of controversy for people when the first images of April came out and we were really hoping that it was more of a, a prototype uh, image but as you can see she does have this double knee joint um, that looks a little awkward with the articulation in place where we see the double the double knees there the two cuts here above and below the knee uh, but you know maybe that was the best that they could do to hide the articulation uh, but if you'll notice the, the legs here are slightly darker than April's skin tone so she was wearing um, stockings or leggings in the film so that's what this represents darker uh, pantyhose material so she has those double jointed knees guys so she can get pretty flexible all the way up. I guess if she's skipping down the street with one leg up in the air behind her, but uh, that's for both legs. And these are pretty flexible coming out of the box, so I'm glad that they're not too stiff like most of NECA's knee joints that we've seen before in my unboxing. Uh, but if we move on down a little bit, uh, we do have ankle rockers here, so she can get some forward and back with her feet and then you know from side to side left and right at those angles now we'll try to stand her up a little bit here her feet are pretty small so it would be kind of difficult 
to get her to stand on her own, but there she is, very delicate. Um, I wouldn't trust that really to stand up on a shelf for very long. Uh, but to remedy that, it looks like NECA, as one of the accessories, has given us a stand with a peg hole in it. So we can actually peg April here to the stand, and that will help a little bit with her standing up. So there we go, guys. So April can now stand a lot better on those smaller ankles, the smaller feet. So we don't have to worry about her falling over. So now guys, we'll take a look at the sigh here that she did come with. So she picked up Raphael's lost sigh at the beginning of the movie when he saved her from the, the muggers in the street. Uh, now I would have to compare this to the other sigh that actually came with the, the actual Raphael figure, uh, but it does look slightly bigger and slightly different in, in paint. It looks a little bit more shiny metallic on the actual main blade of it, but I could be mistaken, guys. Uh, but she does come with that sigh. And we'll take a look finally at these pizza boxes here. This is actually a great amount of detail that NECA has given us for an accessory that uh, was maybe not even in the movie at all, or if not, maybe in the background or not very prominently featured. Uh, so we do have, if you look, the Smellios is the brand name on there. And we can turn this over and we see Josh's frozen pizza. Very nice detail there. So these are probably in reference to the frozen pizzas that April said that she had for the turtles when they arrived at her apartment. So again, guys, this was the April O'Neil ultimate figure from the 1990 movie. As she appeared in that film, Likeness of Judith Hogue. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments if you have this figure or are still waiting for it in the mail. I know that NECA did a pre-order of just the standard figure, which is what I have here, and there's also another ultimate version, a signature edition version that comes with a uh, like a, uh, uh, Channel 3 news badge lanyard, uh, an autograph by Judith Hogue herself, and it comes with her signature yellow raincoat in the film as well, uh, but that was $100. And this one was only the standard $29.99 retail for the ultimate figure. So I went with this version and I went ahead and I got it uh, when it was pre-ordered and I already have it. So I think that those folks that ordered the signature edition are still waiting for that April as well. So let me know guys in the comments, do you have it? Are you waiting for it? Let me know what you guys think of it. Um, let me know what you think that Judith Hogue thinks of it. <laughs> and I know we still have the new Casey Jones that's coming out with the actual face sculpt under the mask. So I've yet to find him in Walmart stores, but hopefully pretty soon we will find him. So guys, if you like this video, please support the channel by hitting that like button. Please hit that subscribe button if you want to see more great videos from the Pop Complex. Always hit that bell to be notified anytime I upload a brand new video to the Pop Complex. And as always, you can support the channel by going to patreon.com forward slash the Pop Complex. So guys, this was the ultimate April O'Neil unboxing, and I hope you guys have a totally radical day.